Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this online service for First Lutheran Church and Preschool. I'm Pastor Andy Jones. Today we continue our sermon series on poetic wisdom, and today we're going to be looking at the prophet Jeremiah and this particular sort of pithy cliche that he uses. He asks the question, what has straw in common with wheat? That's what we're going to spend our time meditating on today. What straw and wheat have in common? And the answer is, not much. We'll delve into that in the sermon today. God's blessings as you worship with us this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to First Lutheran Church in Preschool. My name is Pastor Andy Jones. So glad that you could join us this morning. Welcome if you're joining us online today as well. Before we get started, a few different announcements. First of all, we've got some thank yous to do. Did you notice the new parking lot? Oh, it looks good. Yes, a round of applause for Kent. For all the trustees, thank you all for doing that. It looks so much, so much better. We're glad to have that done. Also, we had movie night on Friday. It was pretty good. Uh, thanks to all of you who came. Thanks to the Board of Outreach for putting that on. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Had lots of uh, preschool families and, and other people out there. So good times. Enjoyed it a lot. We have another one coming up in September, so stay tuned for that. Also, uh, we have a new thing in the sanctuary that I haven't talked about in a couple of weeks. If you look over there, you'll see a new piano. We will be talking about that uh, in first notes. I'll give you a little bit more detail on that. But in the coming weeks, we're going to make sure it's a little bit more mobile. We're going to probably be taking a pew out over here to make a little bit more room for it because it's a little tight getting into the uh, sacristy back there. So more details are forthcoming, but we're very thankful to have this new beautiful instrument. And finally, the Bible for the week. We're really going to our roots as Lutherans today. This Bible is in German. So, a little bit about German. German is the official language of both Germany and Austria, and one of the official languages of Switzerland. As of 2019, there are nearly 2,000 people who speak German in Contra Costa County. A handful of them are part of this congregation. Fun fact for the day, there are six different ways to say why in German. So there you go. So, <laughs> got to put this Bible out somewhere. Oh, let's see, who wants to help me today? Kalia, you want to help me? So, Kalia, put this wherever you like. If you want to give it to Brad, he speaks German. He's right there. <laughs> Brad knows lots of languages. <laughs> all right, very good. That's all the announcements that we have for this morning. Please stand as we sing our opening hymn, Thy Strong Word.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die and rise for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have heard a sure and certain word from the Lord. The psalm for the day is a selection from Psalm 119. My soul longs for your salvation. I hope in your word. For I have become like a wineskin in the smoke, yet I have not forgotten your statutes. The insolent have dug pitfalls for me. They do not live according to your law. They have almost made an end of me on earth, but I have not forsaken your precepts. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. This is the feast of victory for our God. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Merciful Lord, cleanse and defend your church by the sacrifice of Christ. United with him in holy baptism, give us grace to receive with thanksgiving the fruits of his redeeming work and daily follow in his way. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. It's now time for the children's chat. So boys and girls, come on up. I've got the message for you this morning. All right. You ready, Skylar? All right. Today we're going to look at some pictures, and I want you to tell me 
what are some of the similarities and some of the differences between the two pictures, okay? So, Addie, what's that? It's a cat. Very good. And what's this? A dog. Okay. So, what is similar between a cat and a dog? What do you think? They're both pets. Very good. Yeah. So they're similar in that they both can live in your house and you can take care of them. But are they a little bit different too? Yeah, they're not exactly the same. They're a little bit different, okay? It's okay. All right, next one. What's that? A banana bunch. And what's that? Oh, that's the wrong one. What's that? Broccoli. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's similar about a banana and broccoli? Yeah, banana is a fruit, broccoli is a vegetable. We eat them both, but they're a little bit different, right? Okay. The last one, though, you got that right. Yeah, it's a bale of straw. This one's a little tougher, though. It's, it's a bunch of wheat, okay? And do you see all, like, the little grains that are down here? Okay. So straw is something that we use for, like, cows to lay in or horses, and wheat is something we put into food like your cereal and your bread gets made out of wheat, okay? Sometimes at least. So in our sermon today, we're gonna to talk about wheat and we're gonna talk about straw. And we're gonna talk about how they're similar, but how they're also very different, okay? So pay attention later. Let's pray. You ready to pray, Skylar? You fold your hands with me? All right, repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us. No matter who we are. No who we are. Amen. Amen. All right. Go back to your seat, Skylar. Thank you. The uh, Old Testament reading is found in Jeremiah chapter 23, beginning at the 16th verse. Thus says the Lord of hosts, do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you, filling you with vain hopes. They speak visions of their own minds, not the mouth of the Lord. They say continually to those who despise the word of the Lord, it shall be well with you, and to everyone who stubbornly follows his own heart, they say, no disaster shall come upon you. For who among them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see and to hear his word? Or who has paid attention to his word and listened? Behold the storm of the Lord, wrath has gone forth a whirling tempest. It will burst upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has executed and accomplished the intents, the intents of his heart. In the latter days, you will understand it clearly. I did not send the prophets, yet they ran. I did not speak to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, then they would have proclaimed my word to my people, and they would have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their deeds. Am I a God, am I a God at hand, declares the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can a man hide himself in the secret places as they cannot see him, declares the Lord. Do I not fill heaven and earth, declares the Lord? I have heard what the prophets have said, have said who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall there be lies in the heart of the prophets who prophesy lies and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart? who thinks to make my people forget my name by their dreams that they tell one another, even as their fathers forgot my name for Baal. 
let the, pro let the prophet who has dream has a dream tell the dream, but let him who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, declares the Lord. Is not my word like fire, declares, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson is found in Hebrews, starting in chapter 11, beginning at verse 17. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was in the act of offering up his only son, of whom it was said, through Isaac shall your offspring be named. He considered that God was able to even raise him from the dead, from which, figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. By faith, Isaac evoked future blessings on Jacob and Esau. By faith, Jacob, when dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph, bowing in worship over the head of, the, of his staff. By faith, Joseph, at the end of his life, made mention of the exodus of the Israelites and gave direction concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden from three, for three months by his parents because they saw that the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's edict. But faith, by faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. By faith he left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and sprinkled the blood as they, so that the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch them. By faith the people crossed the Red Sea as if on dry land. But the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho came down after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. And what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Japheth of David, and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weaknesses, became mighty in war, put foreign uh, armies to flight. Women received back their dead by resurrection. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release so they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sewn in, sewn in two. They were killed with the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering about in deserts and mountains and in dens and in caves of the earth. And all these, though condemned through their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better for us, that, that apart from us they shall not be made perfect. Therefore, shall we, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, that us also lay aside every weight in sin which clings so closely and let 
us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against him, so that you may not grow weary or faint hearted. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the Alleluia in verse and the reading of the Holy Gospel. Alleluia. Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, what has straw in common with wheat? Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, I came to cast fire on the earth and would that it were already kindled. I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how great is my distress until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. For from now on, in one house, there will be five divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you, see the, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you say at once, a shower is coming, and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be a scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord, Savior, and true prophet, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for this sermon is the Old Testament reading from Jeremiah 23, especially these words in verse 28. What has straw in common with wheat. Right now we're in the middle of a sermon series called Poetic Wisdom. And so today we're looking at that phrase, what has straw in common with wheat? It's sort of this poetic cliche, if you will. It's a proverb of sorts. But as I was preparing for this sermon several weeks ago, I realized this is no longer a proverb among us. This is more of an enigmatic phrase. The people that Jeremiah is writing to would have known exactly what he meant. They would have known the answer to the question. But I'm guessing that there are some of you out there going, I don't really know what he's talking about. What do they have in common? What is this about? Thankfully for you all, I grew up on a farm. Now, I know less about farming than any other person who's ever grown up on a farm, but I do know the difference between straw and wheat. I was just talking to my dad on the phone a couple weeks ago, and he only could talk for a minute because he was bailing straw. Bailing straw was like top two of my least favorite things to do on the farm. Bailing straw involves several different jobs. First of all, you need someone to drive the tractor. You need someone on the hay rack who's taking the bales from the, the tractor and putting them on the hay rack. Then you need someone to transport that hay rack from the field back to the hayloft, back to the barn, and then unload the straw onto the conveyor belt that goes up into the barn. But the worst job, my job more often than not, was to be in the hayloft to grab the straw and to stack it, just so. I hated this job. This always happens in July or early August, and Minnesota gets hot. It's like 90, 100 degrees some days, and the hayloft? It's like 120, 130 up there. It's hot, it's humid, it's dusty, it's terrible. And the whole time, you're walking on straw. It's not fun. Bailing straw is terrible. It's not my favorite thing to do. But we had to do this every year, 2,000 to 2,500 bales. Because we used the straw for our cows. It's what the cows laid on. It was their bedding. 
But where does straw come from? Well, glad you asked. <laughs> straw is a byproduct of other things, sometimes wheat. You combine wheat or barley or oats or rye, and then what's left over, you chop up, and that turns into straw. So understand the difference, okay? Straw is empty. Straw is inedible. You cannot eat straw. It's really not that good for much. It's really scratchy, too. It's not really that useful. It is not filled with nutrients. It's just empty. Wheat, on the other hand, is an absolute food staple. Wheat, go wheat goes into so many different things in our world that we eat. In 2020, there were 1.7 trillion pounds of wheat harvested worldwide. It goes in your cereals, it goes in your breads, it goes in all sorts of things. Wheat is a really important thing. It nourishes us, it's full of nutrients. It fills us up. That's the difference. Straw is empty, wheat is very filling. Straw has no nutrients, wheat has a lot. So, what in the world does that have to do with what Jeremiah is talking about in chapter 23? Notice what Jeremiah said up front. There are these false prophets that are roaming around the countryside. They are proclaiming that they have heard a word from the Lord, but they haven't heard anything at all. They are speaking their own words, inventing fantasies of what is about to happen. And not shockingly, what are they saying? All's going to be great. No problems at all. The world's going in the right direction. Everything is wonderful. But Jeremiah calls them out for what they are. They're a bunch of liars. God has not spoken to them at all. They are empty. They are straw prophets. On the other hand, Jeremiah, he is speaking the truth. He has heard directly from the Lord. He is proclaiming God's word, and he's telling the people what's about to happen, but they don't want to hear it because it's not good. It's not good news what's about to happen. So they don't want to listen to Jeremiah, even though he's feeding them with the very word of God, even though he's giving them the nutrients and nutrition they need to react and respond properly, they don't want to listen. They prefer straw over wheat, and that's a real problem. What do we do with this in our world today, though? Because let's face it, this is a question that you've asked me before, several of you. Pastor, there's like thousands of denominations and you disagree on lots of important stuff, so who's right and who's wrong? And how do I know? It's a tough question, isn't it? It's a very difficult question. For me, I have two questions that I tend to ask to try to figure this out. Who is straw and who is wheat? And the first question is, is what they say true? And I mean this especially about people who are trying to predict the future, okay? God spoke to his prophets of old by giving them this direct revelation, by telling them what he was about to do. The book of Hebrews says that in many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now in these last days, he has spoken to us through his son. Now, I'm not saying that in today's world, people cannot hear a direct word from the Lord. It's possible. God is not limited in how he speaks to us. But it is not happening with the frequency, it seems, that it used to happen in the days of Jeremiah and before and even after. When people go around predicting things that are going to happen... If they're ever wrong, they're false prophets. If they say that I have a word from the Lord and it doesn't happen, they are false prophets. They are straw. And if that happens, if you've ever heard anyone predict the end of the world and then the end of the world didn't happen, don't pay attention to them. They're a bunch of liars. 
If you've ever heard someone predict something was going to happen, either politically or a natural disaster, and they said, God told me this is what was going to happen, and then it doesn't happen, they are straw prophets. They are false prophets, just like the people Jeremiah is warning us about. So if you see those people on television, change the channel. <laughs> if you are subscribed to their YouTube page, stop it. If you get a newsletter from them, unsubscribe. They're dangerous, and they're only trying to take advantage of people. They are straw prophets. So that's the first simple thing, is what they say happen if they predict something for the future. But the second test, I think, is, is more useful for us. And that is, is what they say in line with what Jesus said? Because as Hebrews says, God spoke to, through the prophets of old, but now he's spoken through his son, through Jesus. When Jesus comes to earth, he is the divine Son of God. He is the Word made flesh. Everything he says is the Word of God. All of it. And he says quite a bit. He speaks and brings people into his kingdom. He speaks and tells people when they are wrong. He speaks and tries to correct people. There are lots of pastors, millions of them around the world, pastors, priests, ministers, prophets of now. If what they say doesn't line up with what Jesus says, don't listen. Because the call of the prophets today is to echo the words of Jesus. The call of the prophets today is to point you to Jesus and say, listen to him. He has the words of eternal life for you. I'm hoping those are the words you always hear from me. They are words that I try to repeat and echo to you. Words like, I forgive you. This is my body. You are a beloved child of God. Always and forever. We are called, both pastors and you, we are called to echo the words of Jesus. We are called to share the hope that he has given us. We are called to be wheat, not straw. We are called to consume wheat, not straw. And that's hard because sometimes the straw sounds better, but the wheat is the only thing that is going to fill you up. The wheat is the only thing that is going to provide the nutrition for you, body and soul, that you need to keep going in this world where there's a lot of straw that you have to sort through. So, cling to the words of Christ. Cling to the wheat. Cling to that. Consume that as much as you possibly can. And let the straw blow away in the wind. Jesus has the words of eternal life, and they are yours. Amen. Amen. Now, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you all. Amen. We sing the sermon hymn, the second half of Thy Strong Word.
Please stand as we confess our common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we confess, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. Thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We turn to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we pray for all pastors, priests, ministers, missionaries, and church workers, that you, God, would protect them and curb them from speaking anything other than your word. Help them to speak the words of forgiveness and life you have given to all people. Lord, in your mercy, for all of those who mourn the death of loved ones, especially the family and friends of Ron Johnson, the family and friends of Betty Iverson, and the family and friends of Opal Mencken. We pray, Lord, that you would be with those who grieve, help them to remember the dearly departed fondly with thanksgiving and love. Lord, in your mercy. For all those who are sick, injured, and recovering, especially today we pray for Ralph, Brad, Jill, Ingrid, Janine, Larry, Connie, Nancy, Barry, Ellen, Kurt, Vonda, Brett, Bridget, Neil, Darlene, Addie, and Michelle. Bring them healing, Lord, in your time and patience as they deal with their struggles. Lord, in your mercy. For our Savior Lutheran Church and School in Livermore, our sister congregation, be with them, Lord, as they begin a new school year. Bless their students, families, staff, and congregation. Lord, in your mercy. For the nations of Germany and Austria, and for all people who speak the German language throughout the world, that they may continually hear and proclaim your word to the nations. Lord, in your mercy. For Pastor Matt Wood and his wife Callie, as they welcomed another child this week, a son named Kermit. Bless this child, Lord, as he grows in strength. Lord, in your mercy. For Sam and Miranda Birch, as they welcomed their first child, a daughter named Catalina. We pray that you would bless them, Lord, and help this family to grow strong together. Lord, in your mercy. Finally, Lord, we pray for all of those who are celebrating birthdays this week. Thank you for another year of life that you have given them. We pray your blessings in the year to come. This week especially, we pray for Brayden and Riley. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Come, the table has been prepared. Come, eat and drink for your forgiveness, life, and salvation. Please be seated.
Please stand. Remember these, the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, keep you in the one true faith to life everlasting. Depart in his peace and in his joy. Your sins are forgiven. Now receive the blessing of the Lord that he places upon his people generation after generation. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and to give you his peace. Amen. Amen. We sing the closing hymn, There is a Redeemer. Thank you for joining us this morning. Grab a cup of coffee with us. Thanks for coming. Have a great week.